Okay, it's it's that time. This this episode is something that um, it's going to be it's going to be fun. The reason for it is I feel a lot of people haven't said anything um, publicly, but I think it needs to be said, and I feel that this is a perfect platform to say it. This podcast number three is going to be fire. Why? Because I'm going to talk about the USATF Youth Association. Now, just me saying that if you are in the association or, you know, a part of this group or a coach or a parent of a child that does USATF track and field, you already <laughs> are probably already sitting back like, oh, here we go. So my first off, first off, my focus is not to just sit here and do a podcast bashing the USATF group. I have nothing bad to say about them. I am only speaking upon my personal experiences and I'm offering suggestions and ways to actually move forward to better the association which I really do care for. This is a constructive criticism on the process of how USATF Youth Association works. This is not for all USATF. This is not, you know, pointing fingers at specific people. If you are a person that's involved in the things that I'm talking about, this is not directly, you know, at you. This is just simply the things that I've seen and how we as a whole can make this better to have the children have the most amount of fun, get the best experience, and hopefully continue with this sport and grow it. Now, I'm very passionate about track and field. So if I come off passionate, just understand that I'm speaking from a good place. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. I, I already know that it's going to be Okay, so here are the things we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the issues. I'm going to identify the issues. Then I'm going to talk about my experience with USATF as a professional athlete. Then I'm going to talk about my experiences as a youth track and field club coach. Then I'm going to talk about my suggestions and solutions and things that can help make this overall process better. Now, I do understand that I could probably go straight to the association, talk to the board, um, you know, voice my opinions. I, I, this is the best way. I've tried many other ways, and I think this is the best way because what I think is they're going to listen better. They're going to pay more attention because now everything that everyone's been saying um, is going to be said. And hopefully I can be the voice of the people. <laughs> I kind of feel like LeVar Ball right now. Okay. So first thing I want to set the background. The background, aside from the disclaimer I just went through, is if you aren't under – if you're new to the USATF family, new, you know, new to the USATF circuit – um, let's just put the context, I guess, in it. So SMAF, S-C-M-A-F, I don't know what it stands for. You're going to have to Google it. But basically, that is a track and field circuit. Now, a circuit is kind of like a tournament. You know, you have a certain amount of games. It leads to a championship. The SMAF is a after-school program for track and field and kids get to advance so basically it's more of a recreational quote AYSO style of track and field you can't wear spikes a lot of kids just wear t-shirts um, every city has its own track meet just about 
And then from there, the top three or so many athletes advance to their region where they go to like Downey or somewhere in Orange County or just they go to their, their area, right? Their region. Then the top three from there advance to the, I guess, the championship. I'm not sure what type of championship, but it's a championship. And the top so many athletes from there go to the California State Games. One side note, for those who are familiar with the SMAF circuit and do do it, and let's say your child has come up short and didn't make the California State Championships, the California State Games, it's it, it's its own entity. You don't have to qualify into it. You just go to it. So if your child wants to go to that meet and they didn't make it, they didn't get out of their region, you can still sign up for the meet. I don't think they let the parents and families know that. So just so now you know. All right, then AAU, it's great. I think they run it the way that I perceive good is. However, nobody's there. You know, um, the meets are kind of empty. They're not really, it's just not really there. It, it's, I think it's organized, but it's easy to be organized when not as many athletes are in it. Um, I think they have a pretty good registration process. I feel that their administration side is ran very well. Um, but again, when you have a quarter of the amount of athletes that USATF athletes have entered in each meet, it, it's a difference. However, I think AAU is good. I feel that it's not competitive enough because um, my thing is if you're going to train to be in a sport, might as well train to be the best. And when you are ranked among the, amongst the best, you want to compete against the best and see them because at nationals, it's a whole different story. All right. Then, um, but there also aren't too many track meets in the Southern California area with AAU. They're mostly in, uh, I guess, Palmdale, Lancaster area, Temecula, uh, San Diego, things like that. Now, the USATF, this is, it has a few different versions of it. So the JO, the Junior Olympic circuit is where the, the athletes will go through their specific track meets they qualify into the association then once they qualify in the association they go to regionals and then from regionals the top so many athletes go to nationals which is good then they have a couple other like Hershey's nationals they have a couple other ones that are kind of if you qualify with the mark you just go ahead and advance and go to those meets indoors and outdoors so the USATF circuit is the thing that's really good, I think it's very competitive. Uh, it's fun. A lot, a lot of good things are with the youth association. All right, so the issues. Here are the issues with the, the issues that I personally have. One is the USATF track meets take way too long. The A, the uh, B meets are basically youth all comers there for anyone who wants to try you come out you compete but predominantly it's all the teams that are within the association come and it's a way for them to kind of get track meets under the belt those B meets are done in one day you know they, they go from 7 a.m. all the way until maybe 3 uh, not too bad but then you get to the A meets the A meets literally take forever they're two-day meets. They go from 7, 8 o'clock. Uh, I haven't stayed for a whole track meet, but there's been times where there's been posts and videos of kids competing at nighttime. Now, the meets start in April, which means the sun kind of sets a little bit later. So I'm going to just jump on a limb you know, and say it's 7, 8 o'clock at night, 12 hours meet. Then it, they turn around and do the, the next meet the next day, which is the second half of the meet. Now, of course, you can easily say when you have a lot of kids, you're trying to accommodate each one. I get it. But it's a two-day meet. No matter what, it's still a two-day meet, and it's all day, 10, 12 hours. The, the thing that is tough about that is, you know, you got kids who go to school five days a week. Then you have practice two to three days a week, sometimes four depending on the program. Then you add in two more days of track and field meets. It's a long time, you know, so that's just one issue. 
The next issue is it's kind of intimidating for new athletes and new parents and newcomers. Now, some people could say they got to figure things out. I get it. However, a lot of these kids that are competing are a part of a club team. A lot of the families who are competing or the kids are competing, they've been in this world a couple, a couple of years maybe. They've seen a few things. They know where to go. They know where to stand. They know where check-in is. Well, if you're a brand new parent, it's overwhelming because you have no idea where to go. You don't know how to register, especially if you're a parent and you want to register your kid and you're going to an A meet, you got to know how to go online to the USATF page, register your kid, register yourself as a coach if you want to be one, because if not, you can't hand walk your kid to the events. You can't walk past a certain um, gate and the kid just has to know where to go. And that's kind of tough if you're a one parent with your own kid. The kid has no idea where to check in and, and so on. Anyway, so that's where it's intimidating for the parents. For the athlete, again, is you have all these kids that they know what they're doing. They have uniforms on. They're organized. You know, you have the L.A. Jets who have hundreds of kids, the Shockwave who have hundreds of kids. And those kids, they're, they're a clique. They're friends. They know each other. Even if they're part of separate teams, they've seen these athletes at multiple meets. But now you have one kid that just drops in. He or she has no idea where to go, and they're just intimidated. So that's one issue or another issue that, I was, that I'm going to bring up. Then the qualification process. Now, again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. This is from what I understand. But in order to qualify – an athlete has to do a track meet and hit a minimum qualifying mark within their own association. For example, if you are registered in the Southern California section, you have to compete in a track meet at the Southern California section, with a track meet that's within that section. Then from there, uh, you have to hit a certain mark, whether you jump a certain distance or you run a certain speed or throw. You get what I'm saying. Now, once you have hit that mark, you are granted access into the association meet. The association meet is very similar to like a league championship, right? Now, you can't get into the league championship without having a track meet and a qualified mark within that association. And if you compete outside the association, it's all fine. However, the marks don't count. And that part, I'm going to talk about a solution for that as well. Um... The last thing is lazy officials. Now, that's just the, the, phrase, the quote, the comment. The officials are not lazy. The officials literally want to be there. They enjoy it. They have fun. Most of them are retired. You know, basically, I think it's the baby boomers, but they are there at 6.30, 7 o'clock. They set up shop. They're there till eight nine o'clock mind you these are people that are 50 years older plus there are some younger younger officials but the ones that i've seen are between 40 and 60 years old now to have them standing all day it, it's in on a hot day especially in california it takes a toll out of them and they want to get done this is where obviously if you're mentally done for the day, you get lazy. Now, again, I'm not calling the officials lazy. I love the officials. They're some great people. However, I think they're being overworked. Again, if you get tired in that one day, all of a sudden now, the next day is the same thing all over again. And it's every single weekend back to back to back to back to back. They're going to get tired. You can give them all the food, all the water, all the shade you want. It's just it's just tiring. So if we can figure out a way to obviously bring in more officials, that would be great. Um, and how do we make it fun? I don't know yet, but that will come up next hopefully in this solutions part of it. Now, those are my uh, issues that I have, right? I wasn't bashing, right? I wasn't bashing. I wasn't being mean. I just stated the facts. These are things that I feel that we all want to say. Now, the solutions. First thing with the meets taking too long, here is my solution. You just need more track meets per weekend. All right? Let's look at it just from population logistics. 
I believe it was, I don't know which meter it was, but there were 5,000 entries, 5,000. And it takes forever to get through the 400 meters. Why? Because the race can only go as fast as the slowest kid. There's eight, nine lanes. You can only run eight or nine kids per. When you have 150 kids running, let's just say, a minute, minute and a half, it it adds up, right? And it's not 150 kids. It's actually more, but let's just say that. Okay, so in order to make it run faster, the meet run faster, got to have more track meets. Here's what I propose. Just how high school has track meets, Every weekend, there's probably a hundred track meets in the area. We don't need to have a hundred track meets, but why can't we have two? There are three primary locations. There's the IE, there's LA County, there's Orange County. If we were to hold one to two county track meets, let's say the same weekend Bay City's Unleashed is going on in Redondo or Torrance, whatever city that is over there, then maybe there's one in Riverside, right? Now the kids from Orange County can go both directions. The kids who are, are already in IE can stay there. The kids who are in LA can stay there. Or the kids from IE can drive up to LA and vice versa. Either way, what this does is it cuts those numbers of entries in half. Then maybe we can condense the track meet from two days to one day. That's my logical thinking. Now let's put on my hat that is for for profit. I'm a business person now, right? And I'm looking at it like I got 5,000 entries. 5,000 entries and they're paying $2 per event. Run that. I'm getting money, right? But, 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 if you cut that number in half, you cut my paycheck in half, I'm going to get less money. That's how I think. And I think that's how they're thinking. I don't know. I haven't asked them. But that's a reality. Now what this does is because it cuts the numbers in half, it allows for the association to become more appealing. Why? Because now they can say brand new track meet schedule. Track meets are more local. You don't have to drive an hour to your location. Now they're 15 minutes closer because we offer two locations. Right? We also offer more kids to come join our association. We, we want more club teams to pop up. We want all the private trainers to bring their kids. We want schools to, to say, you know what, we're going to be in your town. All the local elementaries, come join a track meet. Sign up as a membership and run for your club team in this track meet. Now we're going to start getting more kids joining the association. Then this year or next year, that pay cut you took actually bumps back up. Now you're receiving your, you know, 5,000 entries maybe next year. But then guess what? When you get to that 10,000 all of a sudden again and you have to go to two days, we open up another one. Now we have four track meets in that, that time frame. Everyone can eat. Trust me. I've seen the amount of kids that are walking up and down the street when school is over. There are enough kids between the ages of 8 and under and 13, 14 that want to be active, that want to run track. There's a lot of kids out there and we can tap into those kids by simply offering something that the parents want to go to. No parents really, really, if you really were to ask them, want to be at a track meet for 10 hours Saturday and Sunday when their kid's going to run a 15 second 100 meter dash maybe a one and a half minute 400 and three to four long jumps they don't now of course if they're invested in the club program they're invested and they love track okay there's there's those outliers that that stay in that position but most of them want to get their kid in get the kid out that's what football does football game is an hour you get in you get out basketball 45 minutes you get in you get out soccer I don't know it's a running clock I think but they get in they get out Hockey, get in, get out. Track meets, it's a camping day. You're camping. Bring a tent, bring a, bring food, bring a TV. You're literally there the whole time. All right. There, again, there are all are people that really love hanging out. I get it. 
have fun. But I just know we have to have options to please majority. Not everybody, but majority. All right. Now, from there, when it comes to track meets being too long, this is more specific mainly because I'm a jumps coach and I'm always looking at the jumps area and I'm trying to figure out how can we get better. Now, right now, the system, the, the bylaws says that at an A meet, there's a prelim and final. Here's what happens in a prelim and final. Let's say it's 11, 12 year olds, 11, 12 year old long jump and they do their three jumps and the top nine are are picked out right and the top nine are about to jump however there's three kids that are not anywhere to be found why because they called first call for the hundred meter dash right so now you can't have those kids long jump because first call called them an hour early and they're sitting over there at the clerk at the course now they can't finish the actual long jump to move on to the 13 14s or the next age division because those three kids are sitting down over there at the clerk at the course if you were to have those kids check in they have their hip number they know what lane they're in they can come out to the actual jump area finish their jumps finish everything then if they happen to be going in the hundred soon you walk them straight across the track to the 100 meter start and they get their their run in it's it's all good I've literally been at a track meet where we have waited for an hour just for a handful of kids to run their race and come back there's I think there's more ways to make this easier the other option or the other piece I want to add to it is why do these younger kids why do they have to have six jumps? Why can't we do a four jump final? If it's a four jump final, then we can easily have those kids do all four jumps. If it's first call for the, um, the 100 meter dash and they've only done three jumps, well, they can easily just jump right now and get out of here. Then they're all done. Four jump final. Then only use the six jumps at the association, regionals, and so on. Why do we have to have six jumps for the younger kids, especially when it's developmental? I mean, six jumps is a lot. It's a lot for these kids. So I just say, just reassess your overall bylaws, reassess the structure, because maybe there's a way to cut down. And again, if there's 36 kids jumping and they all, and you cut down, um, two jumps off of those kids it really speeds up things so just look at that now when it comes to the intimidating uh, athletes or the parents what I think is USATF should become more interactive maybe have videos for new parents about what to do um, maybe if your new parent hey you know what welcome to the video guess what you're brand new this is what you should be doing your kids should probably work out the kids should actually work out with these club teams that are in your area. Check those out. That's going to sell the club teams. Also, if you're not going to have your kid join a club team, just sign up for a membership and do one track meet. You don't got to do all of them. Just try one of them. You sign up here. When you have your kids at the meet, you walk to this location. Just explain it step by step to help them go through the process. Now, you can even have a parent slash coaching course where the parent signs up. You know, maybe they pay five dollars or whatever, and it gets them to be able to uh, maybe it includes their background check. And it also allows them to get a break, brief understanding of what to do, where to go, you know, how to sign up, how to register online, how to go through athletic.net or whatever other services we're using now. All those things that will really help smooth things out and it will help more people want to sign up. Because right now, if you don't know what you're doing, it's very confusing. You know, you have to have your USATF number. You got to have all these things. It, it's just a lot of things to have, a lot of things to know about. Okay, now the qualification process issue I brought up earlier. Now, this is an issue that I had uh, maybe three three seasons ago. I decided, you know what? I want to get my athletes out of Orange County, out of LA. We're gonna take a trip down to San Diego. We're gonna see what that San Diego life is like. 
We drove all the way down to San Diego. The meet was really, really ran well. I really like that section. And some of my athletes had just joined. I had two athletes that just joined that week. And they hadn't had a qualifying mark yet. They qualified. I believe almost all the kids set new personal bests. The reason for it because they didn't really stand around too much. There was a lot less kids that were competing. And it was just really fun. There was an announcer hyping everything up. Everyone really had fun. It was festive. And the marks were great. I came back the very next track meet. And um, two of the kids that were brand new could not compete in the next track meet. So I'm like, you know, it's fine because we already have qualified marks. So now I sign up for the association meet with those kids. Those kids weren't qualified because those kids had to qualify in our association at our track meets. So those kids literally were done. Their season was done. Mind you, one of the kids was jumping 17 feet and she was a 13, 14 year old. So she would have easily made it to nationals, but or possibly made it to nationals, but she was out because of this structure. This is a structure that I think needs to be changed. Now, um, a couple other athletes who had personal best, they were put into earlier flights. So when they were jumping, they weren't jumping with the best kids. Some of them missed out, things like that. And the thing that I really think is most important is those two athletes that did not make it to the association because their mark didn't qualify. Here's my issue. Um, now, when I competed professionally, I was a part of the USATF Southern California section. That was I was registered in that section. 2010, I was the regional champion. I won. I felt good about myself. Good stuff. Well, there was another track meet the very next weekend. I decided to drive to San Diego where I competed at the San Diego Imperial section. And I was also there, the regional triple jump champion. Felt good. I actually improved my mark at that track meet. Well, I was qualified for USATF national championships. Well, I represented my section. The mark that I entered in was from the San Diego section. I was able to use that mark to go to nationals. My question is, why can't we have that same type of structure when it comes to the youth? In order to have a track meet with USATF, you have to have a sanctioned meet. The sanctioned means that USATF approves it, it backs it. I think if you go to any state, any location, as long as you know it's a sanctioned meet, those marks should qualify you for your own association. Yes, you still should be competing at your own association for that for that association championship. But I think you can go to any meet. Because what if I want to take my kids and travel and say we're going to go to Iowa or we're going to go to Oregon for a track meet just to visit, the, you know, to compete up there and say we compete somewhere in Oregon and come back. Well, if we do well at those marks of those places, it doesn't matter because those marks don't count. We, we got to fix these things. So that's one huge piece that I think needs to be added in. Now, the, the last thing with the, the lazy officials, I think that's pretty much it. Once you have track meets that don't last as long, you're going to have more people that want to be a part of it. Um, you know, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be really fun. The last thing, which I didn't talk about earlier, is just when you have eight and under, when you have 11, 12, and 13, 14 year olds, I really do feel that coaches should be allowed either A, on the field, or have a specific coach's box that's allocated or dedicated for coaches to coach the athletes. 13 years old and under, this is for development. You know, they do say you can go for eight and unders and get, get their marks. Then you have to leave the track. Many times these track meets don't have a place where coaches can stand to see the actual kids. The angles are just off. Now, my thing is pole vault coaches are allowed on the actual field for safety. My thing is I've never, ever 
seen a pole ball coach save a pole vaulter. I've seen athletes miss the pit. I've seen athletes, you know, come back on the fall back on the runway. I've never seen a coach catch an athlete. So if it's for safety, please just let me know. You can comment below and let me know how a pole vault coach will safely help an athlete. Now, I do understand that the takeoff points and all these variables are a part of the quote safety, but I don't I don't think so. I just think that um, somehow the pole vault coaches are just cooler and they've been out, been able to get out there. When it comes to the throws, don't need a coach's box. Why? Because the throws are always in a secluded area, and the coaches are literally within arm's distance from their athletes. So they're already close to their athletes. When it comes to the sprints, coaches can always walk towards the finish line or the start line, talk to their athletes, give them a few more pointers. However, us, the high jump and triple jump and long jump coaches, are always on the other side of the fence. So I just think... Just think about it. Figure out how it'll work. Maybe it's one coach per team. Maybe it's a coach that has a wristband that is, you know, validated. And maybe if that coach does act stupid, because I've been, I've seen some coaches that get a little reckless. Maybe they have um, a few, like, they get scratches, right? Every scratch you get or a point, if you get three points, you're actually suspended from being on the field. I don't know, something like that, right? But just keep it simple. Keep that. I think that will be very beneficial for 14 and under. Maybe you can even say for 12 and under because 14-year-olds typically can be in high school. I think once you're in the high school age, you should be old enough to know how to do certain things. But, you know, if you're brand new and you're 11 years old, you still might need that direction. If you're 12 years old and brand new to the sport, you might need that direction. Not everyone starts track at 5 years old. Because if you're at, if you're five years old, maybe at 12 you're okay. You don't need anymore. But if you're welcoming new kids, you're gonna have to accommodate those kids and and give them opportunities to grow and develop within a sport. So I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully I didn't you know piss anybody off. Hopefully you see this as constructive criticism. I do want to say I love the USATF um, circuit. It's fun. It's festive. It's ran by great parents. It's ran by love. Even the guys and girls that I've had uh, interactions with that were very animated, I respect them because they, we all do this for the kids. We're all there to have help the kids have fun and give them just another reason to love life. So again, if you enjoy this podcast, please, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, click that like. Feel free to comment below about how you feel about what I'm saying. You agree, disagree, whatever. You can email me directly at info at keenanbriggs.com. Let me know about your point of view. If you agree with what I'm saying, let me know if you've experienced some things that I'm talking about. Let me know if the suggestions I gave are just not good. Maybe you just like staying at a track meet all day. You know, um, I personally coach high school and club so i'm literally at two to three four track meets per week sometimes um, within a month i may be upwards to 10 to 12 track meets so that's my world that's my reality if we can make it simpler that'd be great all right thank you guys for listening again if you love this and you appreciate it and you feel that it deserves a tip please you know go to my app if you haven't downloaded that and press that donate button donate whatever amount you think this video or the content that i provide is worth all right guys thank you see you next time